something a little bit different from me this time. But I thought I'd finally get around to doing a little bit of an overview on my railway. This is all Marklin analog system. Um, some of it spanning back three generations. Um, I finally got round to wanting to set up a new layout after about 25 years since my last one. Um, but this time I wanted it to be automated. It uses 10 switch tracks. It has seven signals, four of which are in a block section. It's 3.6 metres by 2.4 metres long and uh, is using a push system with the, the blocks. The push style of automation is possibly the more risky as the train in the preceding section releases the train in the current section. So if a train in the current section has an accident or doesn't start, the train behind will still come in behind and knock the one off the rails in front. Um, but it does allow you to run a single train on the system without any issues. Using the pull method is definitely safer, as the train that is in the current section will pull the train behind the, in the preceding section through. However, with the setup, you must have the exact right number of locomotives set up on the track to make everything work. And as I wanted to be able to run just a single locomotive or a number of locomotives in automated mode, I decided that the risk of the push type of automation was the best for me. The signals and points are controlled by Marklin switch tracks. These have the benefit over the Marklin contact tracks where they only give a momentary pulse when a train goes over, but they are still quite finicky and have a habit of failing. I don't know how many hours I have spent adjusting my tracks just to make them work the way that I want them to. Possibly the most complex part of my railway is the station switching. A switching track on the back straight sets the main signal in the station to go. The same pulse then sets the points that allow the locomotive that is coming down the hill safe entry into the empty station. The locomotive on the back straight then continues down until it reaches a signal that prevents entry into the station until the train that was in that track has left. The train entering the station crosses a switch track which toggles a relay underneath the board and sets the points ready to change for the next train in. Meanwhile, the train leaving the station sets the signals back to red and allows the train coming down the back straight enter the station by setting its signal to green. This train leaving the station so sets the first mainline signal to green, which starts the process of all the trains running all over again. So what did happen to all of the wires? For those of you that remember some of my earlier layout videos showing the automation, you'll remember it looked a little bit like this picture, with wires running everywhere. The logical answer, of course, is that they've just migrated underneath the board. As you can see, there is still a little bit of tidying to do. It's getting a lot closer to being finished than what it was before. I've tried to keep everything organised and colour-coded, red and black to feed the track as well as some 12 volt power feeds, yellow for the lighting and continuous power devices, blue for control and also a white wire for my 5 volt feed. Any of the wires you can still see hanging down either need to be attached to a relay output module or a bear of wire that I've been using for little experiments on the side. Some of you may have noticed that underneath this board is where my love for analog control has met my interest in electronics. This here is one of my ESP32 setups for controlling the points um, or any other accessory that's under the board. This one here, for example, is controlling these two relay boards. Um, and these ones are controlling points and also out to the turntable. This little setup here is um, one of my homemade relay boards along with the um, a 12 volt output board. So this one here is a relay board using a small latching relay and a uh, 7812 voltage regulator um, which I am running off the um, transformer, the Mark transformer and I'm also running some 7812 voltage output modules just for um, 12 volt voltage output for other items on the board. This relay board basically copies what the Marklin relay would do 
um, except that I've had to use a DC relay rather than an AC re relay. In this little device is an input isolator for the ESP. Well, what is an ESP or a digital input isolator and what would I use them for? I was about a quarter of the way through my initial build and I decided that I wanted wireless points control. Still like the old fashioned push buttons, but using my phone instead. I already knew about ESPs and wireless control. This is about where I decided that I would use Rockrail to do the control for me. This clip playing here, just showing some of the points changing and controlled from my PC when I first managed to get everything working the way that I wanted. All of my automation is still 100% analog and would run without any of these wireless bits and pieces, but it was more just for the play aspect and the bit of fun I ended up installing it. It also meant that I only had to do limited cable runs for the control side of things, and I only have seven wires linking the controllers to the main train board. I think I'll end the video there, so thanks to everyone who's actually got this far and has been watching, and I'll just let the rest of this video play out with some of the locos running in automated mode.